Vitamin and mineral supplements are a $14.3 billion industry in the U.S. They're so popular, they're used by over a third of all Americans. But according to multiple studies, vitamin supplements don't actually improve our health. So why are we even taking them? It turns out the vitamin craze could be more or less attributed to one man, a scientist named Linus Pauling. Pauling won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1954, was a founding father of molecular biology, and in 1970 wrote a widely influential book suggesting that vitamin C could prevent the common cold. The best-selling publication quadrupled sales for vitamin C, leading to what vitamin manufacturers called the Linus Pauling effect. But Pauling didn't stop at the cold. Later, he believed that vitamins could treat just about every disease, from the flu to cancer. These claims were featured in a Time Magazine article in 1992, written by a health reporter who later claimed the issue was the year's bestseller. Pauling's reasoning for vitamins being a cure-all revolved around two basic things, antioxidants and free radicals. Free radicals come from our exposure to just about everything, from air pollutants to the oxidation process that happens when we metabolize our food. Free radicals are harmful molecules that are linked to aging and disease, but they can be neutralized by antioxidants. Antioxidants are naturally created in our bodies and can also be found in vitamins A, C, E, beta-carotene, and selenium. So the idea is that more vitamins leads to more antioxidants, which should lead to less disease. Unfortunately, when put to the test, numerous studies have concluded that vitamin supplements that supply antioxidants don't live up to Pauling's claims. In fact, some research has shown them to have adverse effects. One study of smokers in Finland found that subjects who were given beta-carotene supplements had an 8% higher mortality rate. A similar study in the U.S. was even stopped after participants taking beta-carotene and vitamin A were discovered to be dying at rates 17% higher than those not taking them. But despite the bad news for vitamin supplements, we still need vitamins in our diet. And some people who may experience a vitamin deficiency can benefit from a supplement, like vitamin D for someone who lacks exposure to the sun. Pregnant women are also encouraged to take folic acid, otherwise known as vitamin B, because research has shown it lowers the risk of birth defects. But for most of us, experts argue that we should get our vitamins the old-fashioned way, through our food, which means eating things that are dense in nutrients, like fruits and vegetables. So before taking another multivitamin, maybe take a trip down the produce aisle instead.